Number five is Free Grace Theology Channels. Oh. The righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. There is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. So this sounds good, doesn't it? Free grace. Who doesn't believe in free grace? But what these people actually believe is in a cheap grace or a false grace. What they believe in is more akin to mental assent to the facts of the gospel rather than biblical faith. They believe that a person can pray a prayer once to, to put their trust in Jesus Christ and because they say you can't lose your salvation, then that person can go on to do whatever they want. They could go into what we would call full-blown apostasy, uh, mock, blaspheme God, murder someone every day for the rest of their life, and they're still on their way to heaven because they prayed the prayer once and they can't lose their salvation. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Uh and anyone who speaks against this as a false conversion or anything like that is labelled as someone who's promoting a works-based salvation. They often say that people were trying to backload works into the gospel, whereas backloading is a financial term and it means you're actually paying towards something. Whereas what, what we would say is that when a person is born again, they're transformed. When a person is, is transformed there will be a transformed life. To How much transformation? Some degree, it's different for each person. It's not about sinless perfection, but a change of affection. And any of these works are not meritorious in salvation whatsoever. This is not backloading. This is just the pure gospel of grace of Jesus Christ. And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. It's just like a cat. A cat meows because it's a cat. The meowing doesn't make it a cat. One particular channel that I would recommend avoiding is Honorato Diamante. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Uh, one of the more prominent people in this particular area. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. The Word of God says in Acts chapter 16, starting off in verse 30, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, notice this, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Notice the stark contrast between the answer given by the apostle Paul and Paul Washer. A man in distress, desiring salvation, approaches the apostle and questions, what must I do to be saved? To which he replies, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. In like manner, a woman in distress, desiring salvation, approaches Paul Washer and questions, What must I do to be saved? To which he replies, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Is that what he said? No. Paul Washer says, Go home and cry unto God that he might save you. Now, friend, is that the gospel message? Is that response consistent with the word of God? Absolutely not. Paul stated in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 34, For some have not the knowledge of God. Notice this. I speak this to your shame. What an absolute shame it is for a man purporting to be a preacher of the gospel to give such an unbiblical response to the question, what must I do to be saved? The question is simple. The answer is simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house, period. Notice what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 23, starting off in verse 13. But woe unto you, 
scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Why? For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, watch this, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Sound familiar? Verse 15, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, why? For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell. Than yourselves. The preacher must make the message plain and clear concerning what man must do to be saved. The Word of God says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God which trieth our hearts. God has entrusted the gospel unto us. We have a duty to declare it with clarity. We have a responsibility to make it known unto men. Shame on any preacher that complicates or confuses the plan of salvation. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. If you are not 100% certain that you're going to heaven, I encourage you to watch the video in the description below. How to be saved from hell, the only way to heaven, and be saved today. God bless.